What's going on guys? Let's have a quick chat about bear mode. So some of you may know, the homies Jeff Nippert and Omar Isaf both made a good video about bear mode. Link in the description box. And of course, I want to talk about this too. First of all, let's define what bear mode is and then we'll dive into the other subjects. So to keep it simple, bear mode is about having a muscular physique, specifically emphasizing the neck, traps, upper back, shoulders, forearms, and glutes. And then you pile on additional body fat to accentuate your frame, therefore giving you that naturally enhanced appearance. It is a look designed to make you look absolutely massive in clothes and in a relaxed, natural state. No flexing, no special lighting required. At the same time, it includes illusion strategies which make you look much leaner, such as having facial hair, body hair, etc., and even wearing special types of clothing and doing certain exercises that make you look leaner like tummy vacuums and stuff like that. So that's essentially what it is. It is a state of being. It is a lifestyle. All right. So now that we got that clear, let's talk about some of the points that Jeff and Omar raised, starting with how you look. So I think we can all agree here that when you rock a fluffier state, you look significantly bigger in clothes. Sure, the definition will dissipate, but you look massive. So if you had 17 inch arms at 10% body fat, they might actually be 18 or more when you're in a fluffier state. All your measurements will go up, your shirts will get much tighter, and when you're just walking around, going about your day, not even trying to look big, you look big. So it is the ultimate way to look massive as a drug-free lifter. But there's a trade-off in the sense that when you take your shirt off, you won't look as aesthetic, obviously. The definition will not be as visible when you're posing or using good lighting. It just won't have the same effect. In fact, you might actually look worse when you're shirtless in these conditions. So bear mode is for those who want to look massive in clothes in particular and just look big and unrelaxed state without having to do anything fancy here. So you can pick. Either you want to be Mr. Aesthetic with all your defined muscles, but you will look smaller in clothes, okay, but you'll look better shirtless and you have the chiseled jawline and all that. Or you rock a fluffier state and look fucking massive, but you pay the price by losing some of that leanness. Secondly, in regards to food. If you're someone who has a large appetite, or you just don't want to worry about nutrition anymore, well, bear mode will take care of you in that respect because you're typically eating in a calorie surplus. So just the fact that you rock a higher state, it's not as aggressive on your body. So essentially, you're maintaining a fluffier state year-round. There are some individuals who want to be shredded year-round. You're doing the opposite. It's like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care about being lean. I'm just going to enjoy life. I'm going to eat some food. If I got to go out and cheat a little bit, so be it. And you just don't care about being lean all the time. You don't obsess over it. And nutrition becomes really a secondary thing to the point where if you're screwing up and you're not making gains, you know for a 100% fat, that has everything to do with your training program. So it allows you to really specialize and focus on your training itself. Because nutrition is like, so what? It's not as important because you are eating a lot of food and you got that covered. Okay, so now let's talk about the dirty bulking situation. Honestly, there are no points of disagreement here. So what Eric Helms said about being in a massive surplus, just resulting in extra fat gain, that is 100% true. It's why I am opposed to fad diets like GoMad. And it's also why I don't really promote dirty bulking. I made a video a while back called No More Dirty Bulking For Me. No more dirty bulking for me. Although I got super strong doing it, there were so many cons that I would never recommend it to anybody who was even considering it. And in all of my modern videos talking about bulking, it's always been to just eat a little bit above maintenance and slowly work your way up. So the thing is, like, if you're in a massive freaking surplus, yeah, it's just going to be extra fat gain. Does it work? Absolutely. Dirty bulking guarantees you results when your training program is on point. It really, really works. But the truth is that you gain extra fat. So there's no disagreement whatsoever. I've made guys telling you exactly what to do, how to minimize the fat loss when trying to go bear mode, okay? Another thing, too, is that bear mode is a state of being. It is not the journey of, say, going from 160 to 180. It is a state that you maintain over a long period of time, okay? I was bare mode for years. I maintained the 180s for years, okay? And many of those times, I wasn't even in a massive surplus, except for when I tried to force feed myself, you know? Most of the time, I was just at maintenance, or I would use a recomping strategy where some days I was in the surplus, some days in the deficit, maybe some days in the maintenance phase, okay? But like I said, it's not about being in this crazy freaking surplus. Can you do that? Yes, you certainly can. You have that option if you're doing the bear mode lifestyle. But it's not recommended for the simple reason that you're going to gain unnecessary fat and it's not really muscle in that case. And then you will have to cut longer, just the way it is. 99% of you, if not 100%, do not need to do a dirty bulk. I would say it is 100% unnecessary. And the only thing that you're going to gain from this is a lot of fat. Unnecessary fat gain, 
not muscle. And the dirty bulking doesn't make sense in the context of what bear mode is, which is 15, 20% body fat. If you're in a freaking huge surplus all the time, you're going to surpass that. And that's not bear mode at all. That's just fat mode. Set a limit to how fat you're going to get. For me, I always believe that 20% should be the peak of your bulk, which is why I wanted to rename this term a while back. A lot of dudes had this misconception that it's about being a fat ass, you know? That's not at all what it is. It's 15 to 20% body fat. Rocking the highest body fat that still allows you to look decently lean. So you're fluffier, but you're not fat looking. You still got a flat stomach, but you're accentuating your muscular frame with the extra fluff. Pretty much what you saw when I was bear mode and when Jeff Nipper did it, okay? Both of us look pretty good. So that's what it is. It's not about being a fucking fat ass. And if you're 25%, 30% body fat, you're like, hey, look, I'm bear mode. No, you're fat mode. Big difference between the two. And I've seen some guys on Instagram tag me and they're like 30% body fat. They got man boobs. They got freaking gut popping out. And yeah, they're strong. They got good numbers, but they're fat. So bear mode is not about being in this massive surplus. That's why I dirty balking in the past for a short amount of time. I felt horrible doing it and I never want to recommend it ever again. Okay. And that was a long time ago. So I absolutely believe in clean bulking and I recommend you do the same. So find out what your maintenance is and eat a little bit over that. Okay. And you should not be gaining more than one to two pounds of fat a week. You should not. Okay. If you're going overboard, it's just going to be unnecessary fat gain. Okay. So there are no points of disagreement there. Eric Helms is hundred percent correct on this. And so is Jeff. So is Omar. Okay. And I'm glad they talked about this because I'm tired of people having this misconception, believing that they got to get fat as fuck. You don't have to. Okay. You can slowly work your way up and everything's going to be just fine. Okay. Another thing that was mentioned is this idea of being sluggish. Okay. This won't happen if you're eating clean foods and you do your cardio. A lot of people, when they go on box, they completely stop doing any form of cardiovascular work. They get unfit and they start eating much more junk food. So it's an association that is not entirely correct. You believe that it's the extra body fat, but in reality, it's the fact that you cut out certain things that were keeping you fit in the first place. And I'll give you an example. When I was 180 pounds, I was doing the bass room 30 minute boxing rounds. Okay. I was able to complete the full 30 minutes and I was getting really damn good at it. I would say that's when I was the most fit. Because as I started cutting more and more, I started dropping the cardio a little bit, okay? And eventually I got quite lazy with the cardio, I'm not gonna lie. And what happened is that I got less fit, okay? In fact, I was more fit at 180 compared to 165 in terms of the boxing stuff. Although I will say, yeah, the leaner you are, the easier it's gonna be to be fit. But if you're feeling sluggish, it's because you're not doing cardio for one, which you should be doing when you're bulking. And in my systems, I always emphasize GPP work. I think it is very, very, very important. I've talked about it hundreds of times. So you do your GPP, you're not going to have any issues. And then again, you have to eat properly. If you're dirty bulking, that's why you're feeling sluggish. When I did it temporarily, I felt like garbage. I was eating a fucking box of Timbits. Okay. You remember that video I made on dirty bulking? I was eating Timbits, bro. Holy shit. I don't even know how I brought myself to do that. Okay. Especially now how health conscious I am. Fuck that. Okay. Don't do what I did. And I was eating pizzas. I was doing all the stuff just to put on some size. Okay. But there were consequences. I didn't feel as good. There was definitely some inflammation going on. So let's say you're following a whole food plant-based diet, or you're just eating super clean bodybuilding style. And maybe you have a cheap meal once a week and you're in a small surplus, five, 10%, and you rock 15, 20% body fat. You're not going to feel sluggish. Okay. Like 15% is a very good range. And again, that's why I said you got to calibrate according to what you think is best. The range is 15 to 20%. If you don't feel good at 20, try 17. If that's not optimal, try 15. Nobody's going to feel sluggish at 15% body fat. A true 15% body fat, you're slim looking. Okay, you got a lean face, you got a flat stomach, you're decently lean. Trust me, a lot of guys who claim 12 are actually 15%. Okay, it's a perfectly healthy range. There are millions of athletes in this range right now. And most hockey players are 15% body fat. So I don't want to hear the fact that you're going to be sluggish. You do your cardio, you eat properly, you're going to be just fine. Okay, then there's this other point of being skinny fat, right? Okay, again, that's why the range is 15, 20%. You have to calibrate according to what looks best on you. And also bear mode, like I said, at the beginning of this video is about being muscular and using the fat to accentuate your frame. So if you have no muscle mass, but you're putting on a bunch of fat, especially doing it the dirty bulking way, well, yeah, you're going to look skinny fat. That's just common sense. So if you're a complete noob, you have no foundation whatsoever, then obviously, yeah, you're going to look skinny fat. That makes total sense, especially if you're going above 20% body fat, which is not even what I recommend in the first place. Okay. But provided you have a good frame already and you're training the enhanced muscles in particular, it's only going to make you look better in clothes it's gonna make you look bigger. So to me, that's an irrelevant point because people who choose to run bear mode are already jacked. You're just accentuating your already existing muscular frame. 
It's that simple. And most people are gonna be able to pull this off if you have any foundation whatsoever, okay? And this could easily be done within six months of lifting, I would say. Six, 15 months, you're probably ready for it. Real talk. Then there's one final point I'd like to raise in regards to Omar, right? So, my dude, you made a lot of videos talking about body dysmorphia and people who are obsessed with leanness, right? And you even made a segment talking about powerlifters who choose to rock a fluffier state year round. How lean do you think these guys are? They're not 10% body fat. Hell, they're not even 12%. Most of them are around 15%. Real talk. They would actually fit into the bear mode criteria. They feel stronger. They have better recovery and they have better leverages. Everybody knows that when you put on weight and you're in a higher weight class, your bench goes up. That's how it works, man. So again, I found out a bit weird coming from you, especially with your recent video talking about um, how you look like in natural conditions, right? If you're not flexing, if you're not posing, if you're just walking around going about your day, well, it makes sense to be in a slightly fluffier state. And again, 15% is not fat, and most of the best powerlifters that are actually natural are in this range. So we're seeing it among the top strength athletes. The real natural strength athletes are usually about 15% body fat. They're not even stupid lean. And I think it's a better message to be spreading that, being 15%, having a little bit of fluff and being cool with it, not having this body dysmorphia as opposed to, oh man, I gotta be shredded all the time. I gotta be 8%, 9%, 10%, even 12%, you know? Although 12% is a good range. So I'm gonna say 12 to 15 if you wanna look decently lean. So I don't know, I just found that a bit weird. I think that most people will make better gains when you're 15% body fat. They can have better recovery. They won't have to worry about food as much. They're gonna have better leverages as well. And they're gonna look decently lean, but they're still gonna have some extra fullness. So for me, like the average drug-free recreational lifter can absolutely benefit from this approach. And I think that bear mode is definitely suitable if you have a bit of muscle mass on you and you'll definitely look much bigger. There's no question about it. Like I have people tell me that I look much smaller now. That's undeniable. My clothes used to be so freaking tight. Now it's like the same clothes are looser, you know, or they're semi-snug. It's not the same, you know, and I, and I do look smaller when I'm talking in front of this camera because the body fat accentuates your muscular frame, especially with the losing strategies, you know what I'm saying? So that's my take on the subject. Again, I thought they made some good videos, but there's some things that needed a bit of clarification, particularly the point on dirty bulking, because that is the misconception about bear mode. People think you gotta be in this massive surplus. Again, you have the opportunity to do that. You certainly can, but do understand that it's gonna be extra fat gain, not muscle mass, okay? So you do you in regards to that, but I don't really promote dirty bulking. So there you have it, folks. That's my take on the subject. Again, this is not a dissing video whatsoever. I really, really, really respect Omar and Jeff got nothing but love for them and you don't even realize how good these people are. If you've met them in person, if you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, and if you know what they do behind the scenes, you'll recognize that these are real dudes of serious character. So I'm always happy for their success. I'm a big fan of their channels. I watch a lot of their content. I think it's very informative and I really like what they're doing. So keep up the great work. I'm very happy that you brought up the subject about Bermo because it allows us to have a proper discussion about some of the pros and cons. And I do think that people should know this information. So again, much love, and I hope you guys learned something from this video. So give me your feedback down below. What do you prefer, aesthetic or bear mode? Let's see in the comments section.